What's up? What's up? What's good? What's good? Yeah, you know, I, I, I know I'm going to mess it up, so I'm just... <laughs> Oh, Andrew, we always do this where we, like, go TNT. Tony, boom, and we try to hit it, but we always do the opposite hand. It's, whatever, I got I got my buddy Stamps in the house over here. Samson! No, not Samson, Stamps. Oh, Stamps! He called you Samson. <laughs> I thought you said Samson. I was like, oh, dude, yeah. why'd you well, cut your hair? Hey, I did tell him to break up with Delilah. Oh, okay, well, that's good, that's good. Got to be careful with the Delilahs. Oh, yeah. We've all had a couple few or five or six in there. Yeah, yeah. You know. And we've all been like we've all been like Samson. Yeah. <laughs> like, God, that doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to obey you. I'm going to take matters in my own hands. Yeah, that's me, dude. I got that tattooed on my arm, dude. I had to learn the hard way with that. <laughs> hey, some people have to learn the hard way. Anyways, anyway, yeah. what's up, everybody? Thanks for jumping on Truth. We gave you that first minute as we were just saying whatever we wanted to say, <laughs> just so you guys had time to chime in and get in. So I'm sure you got to laugh at it. And uh, all right, what's your buddy's name? Andrew Stamps. Andrew Stamps. All right, so Andrew's on the, on the passenger side right now. But we got Tim here. I'm Tony, and uh, thanks for joining on for Truth. We're here live every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And without further ado, we are just going to jump in this. Uh, Tim, even though you're dry, driving, I'm going to have you pray so I can get ready to share. And uh, then we'll go from there. All right. And this is nothing new for any of you, but if you have had a hard time wondering, how do I drive and <laughs> pray? You just do it. You don't have to close your eyes. God bless everyone that closes their eyes, but he also blesses those that keep their eyes open. It, it, you're going to be the living example of how praying without ceasing is. Yes. I'm you don't have to I'm, close your eyes. This is a reality TV show of how we're supposed to worship God with our eyes open. <laughs> God, thank you so much uh, for your presence and your yes. power. And God, I ask for your dunamis power to come over tonight that mm. would radiate every teaching that is false out of us every teaching every thought process every um logic centered belief i pray that it would be gone and that father you would legitimize every mm. single um word every single single wave that's already traveling through our body i pray that it would glorify you and it would push out everything that does not say your name every mm. every particle every dna um you know, every every atom inside of us, I pray that it would be aligned with your voice right now. In Jesus' yes, name, Lord. amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. And uh, man, how's everybody doing? Obviously, you guys know the drill. Put it in the comments. Let us know how you guys are doing. Interact with us. Engage with us like you guys always do. And um, we appreciate you guys being here. And we appreciate you guys sharing uh the good news as well so um so today uh tim and i have not talked uh at all today so this is our first time him and i connecting so what's up bro <laughs> good doing good man i'm i'm traveling right now i uh, just was in uh, a little town in kentucky called midway kentucky um nice. really 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 interesting um small little um, town and also in Nashville and uh, just traveling through the states again. So nice, that's what's yeah. up, man. Well, Tim's on the road, so we're gonna try to keep it to like 45 minutes tonight just so he can do what he needs to do. Um, so we can honor his time. But uh, thank you guys for coming on today's message of truth. Let me make sure I have it here to show it. Bam, there it is. It's called Worship. So um, I was asking the Lord. I wasn't sure. I know Tim had shared, had shared a text with me. I think it was the day before, and it was along this line. And then it just kind of continued, and the Lord just you know, kept speaking to my heart, worship, and what does worship look like? And, and the question that I, I kept hearing is, what are we worshiping? Because some of us are worshiping, but we may not be worshiping God. 
<laughs> we might be worshiping our spouse. We might be worshiping our time. We might be worshiping our job. We might be worshiping our kids. There's a whole bunch of things that we could be worshiping and idolizing instead of the one that needs to be in first place. So we're going to talk about that today. And uh, so, Tim, I'm going to throw it at you. Um, what do you what's on? What I know God's had worship on your heart as well. And you just uh, lead us and kick it off and uh, let's just go from there and Holy Spirit will do the rest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I want to go. To, I want to go into scripture. It says. It says in the word that Jesus has overcome the world. Yes. And in that, I think we can find rest, knowing that if God Yahweh created the world, and His Son came and showed unconditional love and forgiveness for all of humanity, that if we are not in a place of understanding. And where our knowledge is not aligned with scripture and with him, we will try to fix our world. Mm. Wow. We will try to fix our thoughts. Yeah. We will try to fix our spouse. We will try to fix our brother. Right. And some of us believe this lie. If I only had the tools necessary... <laughs> Right. I could change my brother. I could change my spouse. I could change my career. I could change the industry, the music industry. I could change this if I only had the right recording studio, uh, if I only had the right guitar, if I only had wow. the right tones, if I only had the, the right degree, if I only had the right friends, if I only had the right family, if I only had this. And it's always if I only, and it all becomes about you and what you could do to change the world. Right. Wow. And and in that whole time, if you only knew you had the one. Wow. Wow. I was talking with this uh, about this subject with my friend Andrew last night. I said, you know, it's so interesting to me that Jesus comes in on the scenes. You got one Pharisee saying this. Dude, when Jesus comes in, he's going to come with this big old sword and you know he's got to have his horse and man he's gonna have this grand entrance he's gonna wipe everyone away you know and this and this and this he's gonna take out Herod he's gonna take out you know you know it literally just going through all of the religious leaders in all of the non Jesus is going to take out wickedness, right? Right. So it's pretty interesting. Scripture says that vengeance is mine. That's what God says. Vengeance is mine. Now, Jesus comes in on the scene to this group of Pharisees. Let's, let's give an idea of the second Pharisee. The second Pharisee says this. No, man, Jesus is coming, come in as a humble servant, man. He's, he's literally just, you know, he's going to have angels all around him and dude, there's nothing's going to stop him. And no, 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 no. You know, one guy's kind of getting it, you know, his visual, like his vision is getting closer and closer to how Jesus come in. Then you got the next right. guy and he's like, no, you guys got it all wrong, man. He's going to be just, he's one of us right here. Probably like. You're really uh, great at memorizing scripture, so it's probably, you know, maybe Jesus is going to come out of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just visualize this scene with me. Jesus walks in to the scene with all these three guys with different ideas, not just concept, but truths. Right. They have formed a belief around their thoughts. Right. It and was surrounded around their understanding of the world. Yes. Wow. And Jesus walks in with sandals, with a, you know, very, very simplistic person, very kind and gentle. And he says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. And they look at each other and they go, repent? Ha <laughs> ha, you kidding me? You're not even, you never even went through all the Christians or all the studies, not Christians, sorry. You never even right, went through right. all the Jewish the Jewish culture, you never even had a rabbi above you. You never, you, you didn't even, in, in our world, you didn't even go right. to Bible college. Right. Don't, 
don't tell me to repent. Don't tell me to change my way. Don't tell me that. But what right. Jesus was speaking was about the Greek. The New Testament repentance was a change of mind. Yep, change the way you think. Which they needed to change their mind to be, yeah, to transform their life in that moment. Yep, exactly. And, and so their allegiance was to their flesh. And yep. Christ's allegiance was to the Father. And so he's speaking from the Father's heart, from the Father's voice. He comes in and says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. He is carrying heaven. Hey, change your mind, guys, because I'm carrying heaven. And there's going to come a time where all of you will have the chance to carry heaven. That's pretty much what he's saying. And yep. so in saying this, I want you to turn off Bethel. I want you to turn off Hillsong. I want you to turn off Elevation Worship. I want you to turn off all the hymns. I want you to turn off every single song, even Carrie Job. I want you to turn off all of the modern day versions of heavenly worship. The, the people that have influenced you the most to the throne room of God. I want you to turn them all off. And I want you to ask yourself this one question. Is my life worshiping God? Is it worshiping me or is it not sure where to go? Mm. Wow. You know, I can't say that I'm an NFL player because I yell at the top of my lungs and I run on the NFL field. I can only say that I'm an NFL player if I've been contracted by a coach, by the owner of the company or by the owner of the, you know, the, the sports team. And I, I, I can't say that I'm an NFL player just because I run on that field. And and we need to recognize during this time that God is looking for true worshipers that will worship him, not just on the field, but those who will also walk in his righteousness. Yeah. And the only way to walk in God's righteousness is to what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and it will be added to you. I told my buddy yesterday, I said, you know what happens if you seek after money? You get money. Yep. You know what happens if you seek after uh, a wife, a spouse? You get a spouse. Like, if you are a good person, you will end up with what you seek after, what you put your devotion to. But what if you seek first after the kingdom of God and his righteousness? You know what yeah. happened? Everything that you could desire in life will pop up all around you, and you will be surrounded by God's promises and his blessing and yeah. you know what you're doing? It's a natural form of worship at that point. You see you see God's goodness, and all of a sudden, song starts coming out of you. So, right. You, know, you might resonate with a worship leader in our nation. And I, right. and I was a worship leader forever. That's what I was destined to be. That was my title. <laughs> that was my identity. Yep. But I was a song leader. I was a nation leader. That's what I was. I, in the mega churches, in the, um, on the streets, I was a nation leader. Was I a worshiper? No. Tell you why. I'll tell you why. You're going to call me crazy. You guys might say, no, Tim, I remember you. You were, you know, you were, you. no, I wanted to become famous Yep. so that I could make God famous. Yep. And five years ago, I'm in Bible college and I'm getting promoted and promoted and promoted and promoted bigger stages, more audience, you know, to the point where it's 10,000 people I played music in front of. And I, and right before that happened, God spoke these small, you know, still small voices, really, 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 really intricate words to me. He said, Tim, I don't need you to promote me. I said, but God, what, you know, what if I got on live television, man? And, you know, everyone's like, oh, my God, your song was so amazing. And I was like, yeah, but it was all Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. And, you know, I just saw this huge, you know, angelic, um, heavenly moment happening for live television where I'm, I'm repping Jesus Christ. I'm repping Jesus and Jesus is getting the glory and the entire world has yeah. a happy ending. You know, this is, this is my young mindset. Yep. And God says, he's 
few words to me. Tim, I don't need you to promote me. What my son did was enough. Yeah. And in conclusion to all that, because Tony is getting lit and he's hearing from the Holy Spirit, but in conclusion to all that, I realized that worship was not a song, it was not a lifestyle, but it was a devotion. It was a heart posture. Hmm. Yeah. It's so good, man, because there was so much, and the Holy Spirit's going to have to remind me of some of the things you said so I can uh, catapult from there. But one of the things I do remember that you said was, it, everybody is basing it off of, let me see, Lydia just wrote something. Let me put this on here. I made it. Oh, she made it. I almost forgot. Thank God for the husband. <laughs> he reminded her. Awesome, Lydia. It's good to have you. She's got a good husband. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Good guy. Yep. Gary. Gary G, man. What's up, brother? Gary's awesome. Shout out to Gary. Yes, fam. Hello to you as well. So um, Tim's just been talking about worship and we're just going to continue it on. So when you said what you said, what I heard was this, that it's based on our understanding, like all the all the people of old and even now today, it's based on what we know. So we try to, oh, the kingdom of God is, you know, God's coming and, and it's going to be like this. It's going to look like this. Everything that you had said, I'm not going to rehash it. So but it was based on their understanding of what they knew. They only knew they didn't know the Lord yet. They didn't know about that kingdom. They only knew about their world, what it was like. So they're saying, OK, insert this new figure and put him into this world and be like, boom, he's our new king. He's going to reign and blah, 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 blah. So that's how they're thinking. So it got me quickly to think about how the Lord uh, says my people perish for a lack of understanding. So that's what I got out of everything that you said there early on is my people perished for a lack of understanding. And I'm like, man, if we know that we are perishing because of a lack of understanding, let's get the understanding. Let's commune with Holy Spirit. That's the gift Jesus gave us. Holy Spirit, let's commune with Holy Spirit. Let him do let him do what he's, he's going to do, which is to teach us. Um, and this goes back, and you guys heard me say this a bunch of times, but I'm going to say it again. That's when the Lord spoke to me in 2015 of December, and he said, I want you to blank canvas your mind and let me teach you. See, my understanding was always based on the world and all and other people's ideologies, and it was just all mixed. But it wasn't from the perspective of God, the perspective of love, the perspective of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And, and until I blank canvassed my mind, Tim will be back in a minute, um, he's having internet connections uh, issues, but I'm sure he'll jump on. But when we, when I blank canvas my mind, when he gave me that, it was like revelation perspective, revelation knowledge. And I heard it so, so, so quietly in my heart, but I heard it loud and clear. You're good. I, I know you might come, come and go because of the internet, but you're okay. So when I heard that blank canvas your mind, it, it was revelation because I never took the time to do that. I always just incorporated God, incorporated what I did know, but it was all mixed in with other stuff of other pastors, other leaders, other this, other that. I never actually took everything and went to Holy Spirit with it. And, and, and you know, years later, the Lord tells me, you know, Holy Spirit is the one discipling us. I'm like, dang, of course, Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Of course, he's the one discipling us. Like, so the more revelation. So so everything that you're saying, Tim, I, I, I love how you said it. And there was, there was a few more things I wanted to uh, tap into. They're not coming to me just yet, but I know it will. But repentance, changing the way we think, and, 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 and that's what we need to do. Um, is change the way we think. And, and, and some of us have been doing the same thing over and over and over. We've been kind of having the same relationships in the same way over and over and over. Uh, we handle problems the same way over and over and over. Uh, just there's patterns. There's patterns that we've been doing the same over and over and over. And, 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 and I would challenge you to question, why do I keep responding in this way? Why do I um, get angry quickly when this happens? Why do I feel like somebody is pushing my button? You know, I heard Dan Moeller say this and I love it. He said, 
he said, he said to the lady, the lady was a wife, and, and the wife was just like, man, my husband this, my husband that, blah, 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 blah. He knows he's doing all these things. He's just pushing my buttons. He, he knows that it, it, it pushes my button and it gets on my nerves. And, and Pastor Dan, I just need you to pray for my husband. And, and if we can just pray, you and me together, and da, da, da. And, and Dan looks at her, and he's like, honey, we'll pray. But let's, let's bypass all of that. Here's what we're going to pray for. And she's like, okay, whatever you say, Dan, because I know you have wisdom. And da -da, she's puffing him up, right? And he goes, okay, you ready? He goes, why don't we pray that we remove your button? <laughs> so <laughs> to remove your button. Hey, bro, you're back? I'm back. <laughs> hey, I want you to get this laugh. I think I think you heard me say this before, but I'm, I'm just laughing again about it, where the, the wife is talking uh, talking to Pastor Dan about my husband this, my husband that. He's always pushing my buttons. He gets on my nerves, blah, 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 blah. Can you pray for me? And I want to change him. And that, like you were talking about, I want to change him. I'm just done. And blah, blah. I, Dan, I need you. I know you have a bunch of wisdom. Let's pray that my husband change. And he goes, all right, honey, we're going to pray. But not all of that. How about this? And she goes, whatever. You're you. I know you're. You got wisdom. You hear from the Lord. And she goes. She goes. What is it, Dan? And he goes, Honey, how about we pray that we remove your button? Because <laughs> then there's no. He can't push the button. <laughs> Her jaw dropped because it was profound revelation. She realized in that moment, oh my goodness, it's been That's me the, the whole time. Thing I've heard all day. Dude. I've heard of a lot of it, awesome things today, but that's a pretty crazy thing. <laughs> Why don't we pray that we remove everybody's button? So I'm laughing because I'm going to tie this into all of us for us because um, you, you were gone, but I won't say it again. But whatever you're dealing with, there's things that you've reacted in certain ways for so long. It might be a time to repent, change the way you think. Handle it differently. Change the way you respond to uh, that situation. Change the way you respond to that situation. You know, you might have to remove that button. You shouldn't have a button. You know, uh, another one is is uh, you know what they what do they say? Uh, uh, man, uh, uh, thick skin or whatever. And 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 I heard Dan say it like this. He goes, forget about the thick skin. That's the world's thinking. Thick skin. How about some new skin? He goes, you're a wine skin, man. How about some new skin? You know, and, and, and these are things like like it's all throughout the Bible and it's all throughout the word. And it's like if we would get excited for God and for what he's doing and that he's the one. And when we focus on him being the one, like Tim said, the, that the, the kingdom is at hand, it's here. And, and if we would seek first the kingdom of God and let everything flow from that. Then we would realize, man, I need, there's some stuff in my heart I need to get out of there. So anyways, I, that was a good laugh. I see some people laughing there. But anyways, some of y'all need to remove some buttons. Whatever those buttons are, we got to remove them. Me included, all of us. They're, they're, whatever that is, you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to respond in that way anymore. I want to I repent and change the way I think from, you know, in that matter. But... But, dude, while you have good internet, I want you to keep talking, see, you know, see what else you got that you want to share. Uh, Lydia, let me read what Lydia wrote real quick because she wrote something here. Uh, the word says many will say, Lord, Lord, but and the Lord will say, I never knew you. Also, once we have an encounter with the Lord, like the Samaritan woman, when the Lord told her about the secrets of her inner self, then all things changed. Amen, Lydia. And just before I got on here, 15 minutes before I got on here, I was reading that story. <laughs> so, Tony, I, I, I messaged you. You mentioned it at the beginning of the of the video. You met, I messaged you a couple things about worship that God was putting yes. on my heart. And I just want to bring those three things up. And um, You got it. These have been on my heart for about... Uh, for about eight, nine years now. You want me to read them out or are you going to say it? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just say them. Well, okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And so, Tim sent me this yesterday in the morning and he uh, said three forms of worship. Rest, battle, celebration. We just got out of the battle. So, where we are is evident in victory over sickness, over fear. 
wow. I didn't remember. I was lit when I wrote that to you, and I'm like, now it hit me. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't expect that last part, but that's great, God. Thank you. Um, yes, Lord. Okay. Wow. Yes. Rest, battle, celebrate. Sorry, I got a little lit. Yep. Yeah, we just so, got out of so, the battling. Now we are now it's evident we're in the victory over sickness, yeah. over fear. Yeah, so so that's that's only actually true for the side for for the side that is on Jesus. You know, yeah. for the side that is focused on Jesus because the side of truth. What you what you know about a battle is that if you're not in the truth, like if you're not, if you're not on the winning team, then you're on the losing team. So there's obviously, there's obviously an effect for those that lose a battle. If, if you have continued on in fear this entire pandemic, I'm going to tell you that you lost. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. To, I'm sorry. This is a, you know, this is a, Game changer for you, but if you've been in fear this entire pandemic, you lost. I'm not saying that anyone is greater than you. I'm not saying that that you are less than. There's nothing of that in this. But we live in a culture where we believe everybody wins. But guess what? If you have stayed in fear during this pandemic, you have lost the battle. Yes. We were designed for victory and to win. And the only way you can win and celebrate in victory after a battle is if you stay in faith, the belief in the thing unseen. And for God, his promises are yes and amen. God, are we going to win? God, are we going to get through this? God, are we going to this? God, are we going to that? Yes, amen. Um, God, like, are my, is my family going to be okay? You know, like, you know, are the Russians kind of, restaurants going to open up again? I really like that one restaurant downtown. You know what I mean? Yep. That's what it sounds like in heaven. Like as all of our voices are combining in one. God, right. are you going to do this? God, uh, uh, am I going to die? God, you know, no. And, and, and he's like, no, you're not going to die. God, am I going to be okay? Yes. Amen. You know, like he's, he's so gracious to listen to our cry for help. But it's, his promises are yes and amen to life. And that's it. So those of you that have chosen faith during this last battle, I want to tell you that your promises now are victory and celebration. That's it. You won. That's it. Good job. You won. Yep. Okay. Yep. And guess what the next stage after celebration is? Rest. Yep. Because we go back to our camp. If you know anything about the military, if you've watched any old war movies, everybody has their tents. They go back to camp. They go back to their forts, whatever you want to, whatever era you're in, you're going to go back to home base, to a safe place. You're going to go back into rest. Yep. And guess what? I'm really sorry to tell you, but you're not going to stay in that home base forever. You're going to go back into battle again. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what the next battle holds, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to be equipped by your ability to celebrate and, and also your ability to rest. Yeah. If you Absolutely. try to, if you try to bypass victory, celebration, thankfulness, if you try to bypass rest to get back into battle, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall into fear and you're yeah. going to lose. Yep. Because you haven't, you haven't seen the victory. You didn't celebrate the victory. <laughs> <laughs> Lydia wrote this. She said, wow, when I was going through the situation with Jay, my son, the Lord said, how can I do my best work if you're not resting? Wow. Don't you know I do my best work when you rest? Wow. And then the breakthrough over fear was won, and I worshiped in celebration. <laughs> you heard all those words? <laughs> Come on. Jeez. And here's here's another word. And this is for that situation. This yeah. is for you who are in the faith, but you got your eyes off of faith for a moment. It, the exact thing. God is gracious to rescue. If yeah. you had if you had a week or two weeks, right, 
and you just had a hard time. What is going on, God? I don't understand. And you had some moments of fear. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation in Jesus. Right. But I'm saying for those of you that submitted to fear, that submitted to fear. I mean, like you sold your soul over to fear. I'm telling you, unfortunately, you lost because wow. now you're stuck in that. And you wonder why you can't get out. It's because you submitted to it. And God has called you to submit to his face. Come yeah. boldly to the throne of God. Guess what's at the throne of God? His face. Guess what his face ha brings? When you see his face, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it brings joy. And you know what, God, I'm weak. I don't feel right. I don't know if I can keep going. Guess what? Your joy is your strength. So your strength will be renewed like eagles. You'll walk and not grow weary. You'll right. walk. You know, you'll you'll walk, you won't faint. You got to keep your eyes locked in heaven. Get your eyes off of the future of what if and get your eyes on the present and the presence of Jesus and you will your worship will return to your first love. You know, when you said when you said that, Tim, what what I heard too those that were in the fear or maybe in fear right now, anxiety, any of those things that are not of God, all those things, that's where repent comes in. Repent, change the way you think, repent, change the way you think, repent from the fear, repent from the anxiety, repent from fill in the blank. Anything that's not of him, that's what we're repenting from. We're changing the way we think because we don't want to think in fear anymore. We don't want to think in anxiety anymore. We no longer want to think of the way that seems right to a man, but it still leads unto death. No, we want to yes. repent and go to life. We want to repent and go to the source. We want to repent and believe. And that's the whole key. When we do that, that's where, like you said, we see him. It says, and, um, come boldly and confidently into the throne room of what? Grace. Grace meaning, he, you know, you're not going to get what you deserve. No, he's going to give you what you didn't deserve. And wow. he's just going to, Jesus, he's yeah. just going to grace you. <laughs> yeah. You and, know? and you know what, what, what we haven't, what we haven't, grasp the concept of in our nation is what it means to be burden bearers meaning to be the one that looks out for your brother in battle yes we have for those one but if you were trying to look out for yourself the entire battle and you didn't look out for any of your brothers or sisters in battle, you kind of lost the whole purpose of the battle. You may have won, but like you were designed as a human being to unite with your brothers and sisters in battle and to watch each other's backs, look out for one another and Yes. You know, we are called to stay in the faith. And that's what God is calling us to still in celebration, in victory, stay in the faith. Don't remember what it was like when it got rough four months ago. Yes. Don't remember what it was like when it got rough two months ago, but stay in the faith and know that you came out alive. And if you're Amen. still breathing, then there's still God's promise still stands. You know, just like just like, you know, Peter, when he told Jesus, he's like, call me out, Lord. Right. And he says, come right out to the water. Well, Jesus has already gave us the go for all of us. Come. He's already told us, come. He's already told us. he's already given you the yes and amen. Like Tim said. It's come. So keep your uh, take your eyes off the, the wind and the waves and the, the thunder and the lightning and all those distractions that Peter saw. Right. When Peter locked eyes with Jesus, he was walking on water and we will continue to walk on water of this life. Um, 
because we won't see the situation or circumstance, but we're going to see the truth of Jesus. And that truth of Jesus will get us through. It'll he'll keep us above water and he'll keep us there. Amen. Um, I'm sure Tim will come back in a minute or so. Uh, let's see this. I'll, I'll save that scripture for when he comes back. Let me see what Lydia wrote what you right here. We worship those things we constantly think of. Yes, that was, thank you for reminding me. That was the other thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, I know Tim's coming on now. Back. Up, bro. You're good. Um, do, Lydia do wrote this. Best. And when Lydia wrote this, it reminded me of something. She said, we worship those things we constantly think of. For many today is fear. So I see what the Holy Spirit is saying right now about worship. And, and you got it, Lydia. And that's what we've been talking about. Actually, what you just saw right now is what Tim talked about in the first part that you missed. So there you go. You're already caught up. <laughs> so <laughs> Holy Spirit did his thing. So. But see, it's what we constantly think of. And this is what this was a, a reminder of something I wanted to speak on. You know, we what we put our mind to, what we put our mind, our thoughts and what we dwell on. Guess that's what we're going to act on. Whatever your mind is dwelling on, that's what you're going to act on. So if you and, and, and I want to talk to those that have a hard time of seeing themselves as saints, as righteous, as at, you know, faithful, all these things that God calls us. And sometimes we have a difficult time. We're like, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a, and, and I get that. You have to come to that place first to believe and be saved and then be called what he calls us, right? But we have to transition from that thinking because if you keep thinking you're a sinner and you keep thinking about the sin, guess what you're going to eventually act on? Sin. Because you're thinking about it. You're thinking about, oh, I don't want to sin. But guess what you end up doing? You, you're, you're doing what you're acting on. But when you're thinking about the goodness of God, his faithfulness, his goodness, his righteousness, his love for you. And when you see what he calls you and who, how he looks at you and, and what he says about you and you dwell on heavenly things and you think on heavenly things and, and, and your thoughts and your eyes are gazed on him. Guess what you come out? Guess what your actions out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth's going to speak. Those actions are just going to come forth. So I I challenge not challenge, but I want to encourage you that you transition from that sin mentality to the truth that sets me free mentality, because that's what he came to. And there was something else, Lydia, you wrote. Um, yes, he's taking us from glory to glory. When I read that. I was just going to say that. But you I were? Say, yeah, yeah. I was going to say what I heard God say was he's taking us from worry to worry. From worry to worry to glory to glory. Wow. That's the change. That's the change. And here's the thing. Here's the revelation. If, 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 some, of, uh, if some of us haven't seen this yet. When Paul's talking about going from glory to glory, the main thing he's talking about, he's talking about the glory of the old covenant and the new glory of the, the, the old and the new. And he's saying, if, if the first one was glory, <laughs> if the first one was glorious, how much more glorious is the new covenant? He's saying, so check this out. When we go from glory to glory, you're going from the glory of the old covenant, right and wrong, trying to get it right, doing all this, right? From that glory, because the law is still glorious. The, the God's law is still, there was still, there, it, it still exists, but it's all fulfilled now. That's why he said it is finished, because now there's a new covenant, and this new covenant is even more glorious. So when we go from that glory of the old to the glory of the new, when we go from that, that's when it's the truth that sets you free. That's when you're free in Christ. That's when it is finished. That's when you're more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. That's when you got the victory. That's when you're celebrating. That's when you're rejoicing always. That's when you're praying without ceasing. That's when you're just happy. You're glad because you, 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 your hope is in the Lord. Your hope is in him. And, and the other thing that I saw was I saw how we go from glory to glory during, like you just said, from worry to worry. From those moments that we're in, we're bouncing back from the freedom glory of the new. We go backwards to the glory of the old. And we think it's something we got to do now. Be better. Do better. And oh, I'll, no, it is finished. And he's, he want, he's reminding us. The Lord's reminding us, guys, 
Get out of the old covenant. You're no longer that. It is new wine, Mark 2.22. No one puts new wine into old wineskins for it will burst. You see, our minds will burst when we try to mix the two, old and new covenant. But you are a new creation in Christ and you are in him. And he's pouring in new wine, new revelation. He's putting in the new covenant in you so you would have this new understanding that all we need to do is believe, step out in faith and repent, change the way we think. And that's it. All the heavy lifting is done. And like Tim said, we need to get to the place of resting in that so we can celebrate what the Lord has done, celebrate his goodness and celebrate that the victory is won in Jesus name. Amen. You know, it's so interesting in the, in the book, Romans one, I don't know if everyone's read this and, and, read it and read it and read it again after it talks about this you know in the in in those those days talking about in the future that men will exchange natural relations with women yeah for each other and women will exchange natural relations with men for one another and I right. will give them over to their lust. Right. Okay. Yo, everyone thinks they know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to flip the tables for you. Flip it. Because I'm kind of in flipping table mode right now. That's it. That's it. There's three. There's also three different covenants that you can be in. You can be in covenant with the satanic world with hell you can be in covenant with the earth you know you worship the earth you worship the trees the animals the things that man's created or you can be or you can be in the the other covenant of worship with the king in heaven and what god is calling us to is not something foreign Hmm. It's just a change of allegiance. It's a change of covenant. And so Tony yeah. was talking about from glory to glory. You know, God's taking us out of that glorifying the earth and changing us and elevating us to a place that we've never actually walked in consecutively, which is a covenant and an allegiance to heavenly things. All right, Tim, we'll be back. Lydia, I just read what you were talking about. I'm about, Lou says, amen, blessings, awesome. Lydia, I'm about to get in my tongues, brother Tony. I just spoke to my mom about that today. Praise God. That's awesome. Great to all hear right, that. All right, right, right. No, go ahead. All right, all right. So a covenant, and my buddy just asked me, what's a covenant? Is it an agreement? I said, yeah, it is. Holy cow, it's so simple. An agreement with heaven. You're That's either right. agreeing with heaven, you're agreeing with earth, or you're agreeing with hell. So, oh, I don't know how to get in the New Covenant. I haven't read enough of the New Testament, man. I only read Psalms when I was a kid. And mine, I read Romans one time and said, all sins come short of glory. God kind of felt like I was, you know, going to hell. So I don't really know where I'm at. I don't, I, 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 and just noise going yep. on mentally. Okay. Yep. It's yeah. this simple. Believe in Jesus. Yep. Believe in the Father and receive the Holy Spirit, and you are now in agreement with heaven. You don't have to work to get out of that place of worship in on earth. You don't have to work to get out of that, that invitation out of hell. No, you don't have to work for it. The work has already been completed. All you That's have it. to do is come into agreement with heaven, and the only word that is resounding from the throne room of God is holy, holy, Holy. holy and holy is yes. set apart. What are you set apart from? Oh man, I'm trying to be holy. It's so hard. No, it's not hard. Holiness is agreeing with freedom. Holiness is agreeing with peace. Holiness is agreeing with joy. Holiness is agreeing with everything that does not lift up the name of the Son of God. That's it. 
That's it, bro. You know, the it, agreement. It's like it's way too simple. It's way too simple to pass up. And that's yep. the invitation for the celebration. Yep. The celebration we are called to right now is to thank God for his grace. Thank that's God it. for his strength. Thank God for his joy. Thank God for everything that is good and pleasing comes from him. Thank him for it and get in that place of yes. get in that place of agreement and you will not you will not be buried. Yep. You will not be put down. And that's it. That's why when his last words on the cross and he says it is finished, he's saying what he had to do is complete. You have you are all now reconnected to the Father if you agree to the covenant. If you agree and believe that I did it, if you agree that I was wow. God's son, if you agree that I am he, the one he wow. sent, <laughs> this is eternal life, that you may believe in him and the one whom he sent. That's eternal life. So guess what that means? You have eternal life right now. I have eternal life wow. right wow. now. Wow. I will never be separated wow. from the father. You all have eternal life right now if you believe. If you believe in him, in his finished work. That's why. How could we be more than a conqueror? That's how. It's already done. <laughs> how, wow. how, how do we have the victory? Because he already did it. It well, is Tony, finished. It, Yo. it is. And, and I didn't want to say this. I'm really trying to shut up. But things just keep coming up. And no, you're good. Bring it. But, but, I, but, I, but I, I was having this conversation with my buddy yesterday and I don't know what happened but I, I felt like this was from Holy Spirit and the words that I heard was I am not the future I am not the future you know I need to understand and come into agreement that I am not the future I am not the, the person that I need to be it's it, it, Jesus isn't the God that I need him to be. He already is. He was, is. He is, and he's here. Yes. You know, yeah. it, it, it's not, it's not about, Oh dude, Jesus is going to be so awesome when he comes back for us. No, he's right here. It, he's so awesome it's like now. That promotion. I'm finally going to be. Yeah. I'm actually going to be living in 10 years. No, man, you're living right now. You're breathing right now. You are a living, breathing yes. sacrifice of God's goodness. So if yes. you check in and check out, I need you to check in to the present and check out of the future. Check Amen. out of the past. You know, you are not the future. Get the future out of your brain. Don't boast about it. Boast about how good God is right now and your worship will return. That's the right. Will that's, return. That's right. And the scripture I'm being reminded of with that, and we say it a lot here on truth, is First Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ. That's it. It's simple, guys. We are overthinking the room. It is simple. He said he made it for a child to receive it. And this, that you have a reason to celebrate. Even in your grieving, there's a reason to celebrate. There's a reason for hope. There's a reason. And yes, there's a time for everything. And, and but don't stay there. Don't stay grieving for weeks on weeks on weeks on weeks. He wants you out there. He wants you rejoicing. He wants you uh, giving thanks. And, and that and that's it it's it's like we we you hear it a lot like so many people questioning what's going on or questioning god or questioning this or questioning that we already have the answer guys the answer is jesus we just need to believe we need to stay stay on that faith and 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 and, and keep growing scripture says grow from faith to faith take the faith the little mustard seed that he gave us the measure of faith that he gave us and let's grow that 
and grow that to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You know, God's a God's a gardener. He loves planting and he wants us to do the same thing. Why? Because we are Jesus, because we are made in his image and likeness. And he wants us to take that and, 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 and plant it and grow it and see it grow. But you're only going to be able to do this, guys, not on your strength. You can do it on your strength, but you will burn out. You will you will you will die down. You will wither when the heat comes, like it says in scripture. But man, when you just allow him to do it, when you just uh, uh, attach your faith, what I meant was if when you just abide in him, that's it. When you're abiding in him, that's the key. You cannot abide in yourself, you'll die. And here, another simple thing, when he's talking about abiding in me, he's, you, I am the tree, you are the branches. Okay, guys, if we're not a branch and we're not abiding in him, guess what? We're a fallen branch and we're no longer attached, but we die, we wither. Again, wow. we gotta stay attached to the vine. We gotta stay attached to the tree of life. He is the source, and that's where our help comes from. That's where our hope comes from. That's where life is. And, bro, it's beautiful. You're good. I want to see what we got here. Amen. Lydia wrote, uh, God be that Wi-Fi for Tim. He got that fire today. The word is flowing. That's right. Amen. Lydia said, yes, for the word of our testimony on our weakest time is powerful. For the outside sees the strength of God in our weak moment." James 4, 8. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Lydia. Um, I'll have to read James 4, 8 here in a minute. There's one more scripture I want to read real quick, and then I know I'm going to probably have to let you go because I know it's getting dark <laughs> there. <laughs> but I can still see you because you're shining, brother. You're shining. <laughs> you're shining, brother. All right, here's Tony, the scripture. Tony, Yo. I love you. I love you, buddy. I'm going to get off because yep. I'm just hearing robot talk and – that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You. It's just the internet. So you good? Uh, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch uh, online. I'm gonna get online. Let me listen. You're good. We're gonna wrap up All real right. soon. All right, love You're you good. guys. Thank you, Tony. All right, bro. So the scripture I wanted to read um, because Tim was mentioning this earlier is um, here in First John uh, chapter five, verse four through six. For whatever is born of God, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world for whatever is born of God. That's us for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood. Water and blood. What's he talking about? This, this is the one who came by water and blood. Water meaning birth through the mother. He, in the, you know how they have the, the water sack. What is it? I can't remember it right now. But birth by water and blood. Um, Jesus Christ, not with, uh, what was that? This is the one who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ not with water only, but with the water and with the blood. It is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is the truth. That is such a powerful scripture. Um, I, I definitely recommend that you read the rest of chapter five because it's really, really good. And I think you'll get a lot out of that. I'm trying to find the other... Thing I wanted to post real quick. Draw near. Yeah, that's right. I, I knew at James 4 8, that's why I was getting ready to look up. Thanks, Lydia. Draw near and I will draw near to you. Amen. So, so good. Man, wow. Yeah, Tim was on fire. And thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for uh for teaching us and 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 sharing us the word that you did today. Uh my, the thing behind me says school bus. I think the Holy Spirit took us to school today. So he, he took us on the school bus ride and he was teaching us. And I am grateful for that. And I know you guys are grateful for that. And uh, abide in me and I will abide in you. I, man, I'm telling you, that is the key to everything. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff. But abiding, it once you believe in him, 
Now you're in the new covenant. Now you're in freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. The truth that sets you free, it's all Jesus. Once you get that and you start living in the new covenant, now you're just abiding in him. And when we abide in him, we are let, we, we won't, we will not sin when we're abiding in him. Let's be honest. There's times when we do sin and those are the times that we're no longer, we're, we're, we, we, we kind of tune off the abiding in him and we tune in more of our flesh and the desires of our flesh comes in and then we chase that and we go that route and we go that route. But the more we continue to abide in him, we just abide in him because we're just in his graciousness and his goodness. And we're just like, wow. And even, and he, he says it, even when we fall, if we fall, you know, if we sin, the Holy Spirit is there, you know, the comforter, you know, to to correct us, teach us. And that's, you know, where we uh, walking in alignment. That's it, G man. And, and, and that's why it's so important to have the soft heart when he says, I, I've given you I've taken out the stony heart. What's he talking about? I've taken out the heart that used to live for itself, the heart that you, you used to live for yourself. You used to live for just what you wanted to do, what you needed to get, what you needed to use other people for. That was your stony heart. You couldn't even hear the voice of God with a stony heart. You can't, you know? And then he says, I replaced that stony heart with the heart of flesh, meaning I replaced it with my own heart. I've given you my heart because you are one with me as I am one with the Father. I am one with you and you are one with me. I abide in you as you abide in me, as I abide in my Father, my Father abides in me. You see how it's all connected? And, 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 and Holy Spirit is just teaching us and showing us that we are connected in that way, that we are aligned to that, that we are aligned and walking with Jesus. Gary, exactly what you said, walking in alignment. Well, isn't it funny? How are we going to follow Jesus? Uh huh. If we're not denying ourselves, see, if I don't deny myself, I'm going to go my own way wherever that takes me. But Jesus is going the straight and powerful, you know, the straight and narrow way. I saw the word powerful. And he is powerful. That's a powerful word. I know that's what you're talking about, Lydia. But when we align, that's what it is. We're aligning. How are we going to follow Jesus and align to him, abiding in him, if we haven't denied ourselves? When we don't deny ourselves, then we continue. Yes, the plumb line. Then when we when we don't deny ourselves, then we will live life our way and we will we will harden our heart. Isn't it something? Look at look at look at this. Stony heart, the heart of flesh, and then other scriptures talks about hardening of your heart. That shows us. That he gave us the heart of flesh. The heart of flesh is to commune with him, to know him, to stay in line with him, alignment with him, abiding in him, all of those things. But as we not draw near to him, but we start doing our own thing, we're no longer following Jesus and we start following our own path and our own will and our own desires. The flesh leads us astray, right? right? The way that seems right to a man, but it leads unto death. And we start doing that, our heart gets hardened. And it's harder to hear the voice of God. It's harder to hear what the spirit of, of, of truth is saying. It's harder to hear because our heart is getting hardened and hardened and hardened because we haven't taken heed to the word. And then we get to the place that we might perish because of a lack of understanding because we've gone away from the, the good shepherd. We're going away from the good shepherd and we have that stony heart and the stony heart don't want nothing to do with God. So, Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do when we get into those moments. So right now, I just feel like praying for those people. If you guys could um, just pray with me. Um, Father God, we just lift up anybody, anybody that's in a place of, of their heart is hardened or they have a stony heart, Lord, and they, they're far away from you, Lord, right now, or their heart has been hardened and, and their ears turned off and their, their heart turned off and their eyes no longer see. Father God, that we pray right now that, Lord, that they would see you. You know, sometimes like we get caught up in, in, in and I'm not, I'm not belittling this when I say this about prayer, about, you know, praying for all these things um, you know, praying for so much detail, but I've come to this place where if we would just pray that the people would just see you, Lord, if they would just see Jesus, everything else will fall into place. 
if they would just see Jesus. So, Father God, we pray for the ones that are lost. We pray for the ones that are blind. We pray for the ones that are deaf, that cannot hear your word. Father God, that you would open up their ears, open up their hearts, open up their eyes, that they would act out on that measure of faith that you gave every single human being on earth. You gave us a measure of faith. So beautiful that you gave us all a measure of faith. I pray right now that every loss, every blind, every every person that can't see, that their heart is hardened, they're far away from God, that they would that they would activate that measure of faith that you already placed on them, Lord. And that they would respond to that measure of faith, Lord. And that they would see you, Lord. Because when they see you, wonderful counselor, mighty God, lover of our soul, when they see Jesus, when they see you, everything will get aligned properly. Everything will get into its proper place. But it's all through you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in this world. We thank you what you're doing in every single human being that they would come to the knowledge of you, that they would get understanding so they do not perish in the lake of fire, but that they would have everlasting life with all of us and with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Wow, thank you guys. Um, another beautiful night. I, uh, I'm so grateful and thankful that you guys were on. Uh, Lydia, was, uh, I'm glad your husband reminded you about truth. That's what's up, G. Appreciate that. And again, thanks, uh, you guys, for just continuing to follow Jesus. Continue to keep your heart soft. Continue to go after him. He is our everything. Let's continue to live from the perspective of it is finished, from the perspective that it's already done. Now we need to just share the good news of the gospel. And this actually leads me to the last thing I want to say real quick. Let me take a Something I heard. Yes. Amen. Love you. Love you too, dad. Yes. Lose. Amen. Um, let me post some of these comments here. Uh, Lord changes everything. Boom. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to say that I, 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 as I was working the other day, I think it was last week and um, I saw a different way of, sharing the gospel you know how like there's certain ways and i'm not saying there's a wrong way or a right way i'm just sharing what god taught me what the holy spirit taught me the other day while at work and and i realized that i was just communing with the lord as i'm working just like i've always told you guys and i'm just you know working thank you lydia i appreciate that um and that that i'm just working and and i'm just fellowshipping with the lord you guys know and and we're all fellowshipping right and i'm just fellowshipping with god man lord it's so good to be with you and you know how's it going and just talking you know and you just you know you have a conversation with the lord I'm, I'm sure i'm not the only one this is how we have fellowship right the same way i fellowship with you i have fellowship with the lord that way and with holy spirit and and then it dawned on me you know that i'm 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 i'm, I'm I'm tying into my relationship with him and I'm, I'm having a relationship with him and I'm hanging out and, and I'm just hanging out there. What was Paula saying? Sorry, I've been missing, been so very busy in ministry. No problem, Paula. God bless you. Just we know we're with you in spirit and we know you're with us in spirit. You're good. And um, so you're building up this relationship. So it dawned on me, you know, a lot of times we come out like, you know, when we go out to go share the gospel, you know, we want to kind of you know, say, Hey, you know, do you know Jesus? Do you know this? You know, I, I'm, I can't even think of what, how I want to say it, but however we know we normally were taught the way I saw it this time was this. Like when I see somebody and you're just having a conversation with them and then as you're talking to them, Hey bro, how's your relationship with God? How's your relationship with Jesus? Like, that's the question. And I'm like, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, I'm going to use this all the time, but I know this is what, how I'm going to start at least for a little while because God, the Holy Spirit showed me this. And I was like, yeah, I like that. Lord, that sounds so awesome because you already know us, but do we know you? And it's like, how's your relationship? 
Hey, man, how's your relationship? Because we all have relationships. We all were created for relationships, whether with friends, brothers, sisters, mothers, aunts, uncles, all of that. Friends, all of that. Uh, wife, husband. And I was like, it ain't, it's no different than the relationship we have with Father God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So I was like, wow, to make it intimate and, and, and very personal with the person so it doesn't seem like a pie in the sky thing, like, man, you need to know Jesus and you need a this and you need a that and, and kind of come in. They might not even understand that, you know, and, and God's grace obviously is there and he can speak to their heart. But I just saw it a little differently this time. And I was like, that's how I want, I want to respond the next few times when I'm going out and just, you know, conversating with people. It's like, bro, you know, well, how's your relationship with Jesus? And I could just see some responses like, what are you talking about? I was like, you, do you know Jesus? Well, I've heard of him. Man, bro, let me tell you about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And I, I was like, that that is just so awesome. Paula just wrote, Tony, exclamation point. That is exactly how God has had me approaching people. This is wild that I tuned in tonight. Come on. That is our loving father, Paula. That's how much he loves us, that he would have you jump on at the appropriate time, at the right time where I'm going to share what I'm going to share. And I only remembered it because I read something that somebody else said. And it, it, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to share that before we go. So, yes, confirmation. So, Guys, I, I, I encourage you, like all we're doing, again, let's take it like a faith like a child and coming at it as a child. We talked about the simplicity of the gospel. So if we have this relationship with our Father God, all we're doing is believing what always was. We always were with the Father in heaven, right? We're seated in heavenly places, and now we're just living this out here on earth. And it's it, we've come to that knowledge of believing Him, and and we we've signed what what did we learn about the covenant? We signed the agreement. We are just agreeing to what He said. And when you get to that place, now you're just living out of that relationship. So now when you're approaching others. They're just living their life. They may not know better. They may not know God. They may not have had a relationship. They've had all these other relationships, but have they had a relationship with the one that's always knew them? So that's how I'm going to be approaching it. And just as I, I, I felt it was very natural as I'm communing and having a relationship with the Father and with Holy Spirit and with Jesus, I'm going to take that same relationship with them and just ask them, hey, man. How's your relationship with, 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 with Jesus? How's your relationship with God? And some of them are like, oh, man, I, man, no, I say, ah, I go once a year or whatever the thing is. It's just going to open the door because you're just talking relationship. And God will give you the words. Holy Spirit will teach you in that moment or share with you in that moment what to share with them. He may give you words of knowledge. He may tell you that there's something wrong with their leg or their back, whatever it is that the, the, the pain that they're feeling of a past hurt that, that, that needs to be done away with, that he's the healer and to no longer think on that. And he'll give you the words that are going to speak directly to their situation that they need to hear because you always have had a relationship with God because you're hearing from God, right? You have a relationship with him, but God has a relationship with them. So he's going to share to with them things with us to share with them because God knows them. And that's what blows people's minds away. They're just like, how'd you know that? Or how it's the love of God. And you're able to give God all the glory. It's not me. I can't do anything without abiding in him. It's all Jesus. It's all Holy Spirit. It's all God. And that's how it is. The suddenly, I like that, Lydia. So anyways, I just wanted to share that. That was just something the Holy Spirit taught me a couple weeks ago. I think it was a week or, or two ago. And uh, I'm going to run with that. So I thought it was cool. So uh, I, I got a good kick out of that with Holy Spirit. So guys, you've been encouraged. Saints, go out, share the good news of the gospel. And um, thanks for all the prayers. And know that we're praying for you guys as well. And um, what else was I going to say? Da, 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 da. I think that's it. You're encouraged. Go out, share the good news, and let's continue the good fight of faith, and let's keep shining bright for his king. The kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? Love y'all. Worship. That was today's message. Let us, let us continue to worship the creator. Glory to God. The prophetic is flowing like a river. Amen, Paula. God bless you, fam.
God bless you, Paula, Lydia, Ro, Luz, everybody that was on. Thank you guys so much, and I love you all. Go uh, rest in him, enjoy his presence, and worship him. And uh, if, if we find that there's other things that we've been worshiping or idolizing, let's remove those things, let's repent from those things, and let's get back to our true love, our first love, and let's make sure that he's in first place. Amen? And let's continue, like G-Man said, alignment. Let's be aligned to him by abiding in him and following him. And that we can only do that when we deny ourselves and take up our cross so we can follow Jesus. Amen. Love y'all. God bless and good night. See you, fam. But eat, but eat, but eat. That's all, folks. Dun, 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 dun.